Okay, they've now found that the Sumerian form of math that they have is extremely intricate. And in fact, they found now a form of trigonometry that they have on some of these tablets. And uh, it's actually more accurate and easier formulas than we have. Uh, I'll let this speak for itself here. Alright, for those of you who remember doing trigonometry in school, you can forget it, because ancient Babylonians may have had a better way of doing it. And now, thanks to a new discovery, it could change how we calculate math today. RT's Trinity Chavez has that story. Those of you who remember doing trigonometry in school can forget it, because ancient Babylonians may have had a better way of doing it. And now, thanks to a new discovery, it could change how we calculate today. Scientists at the University of South Wales in Sydney, Australia, have discovered the purpose of a 3,700-year-old clay tablet, making it the oldest trigonometric table to date, and possibly more accurate. Our research shows that it's a trigonometric table so unfamiliar and advanced that in some respects it's superior even to modern trigonometry. According to a paper published in the journal Historia Mathematica, it's called the Plimpton 322. Discovered in the early 1900s, the tablet is inscribed with cuneiform script and has been of interest to mathematicians for years because it describes Pythagoras' theorem. And according to the researchers, the new data shows that it was the Babylonians, not the Greeks, who were the first to study trigonometry. We've known for decades that it's unusual sequence of numbers proves that the Babylonians knew the Pythagorean theorem a thousand years before Pythagoras was born. However, unlike today's trigonometry, Babylonian mathematics used a base 60 instead of the number 10, which is used today. Because according to the experts, 60 is far easier to divide by 3, resulting in more accurate calculations. The Babylonians counted in base 60, the same system that we use for telling time. This has many more exact fractions. It doesn't sound like much, but this allowed them to do a lot more exact division. One hour divided by three is 20 minutes, exactly. By using the system, the Babylonians were able to make calculations that completely avoided any inexact numbers, thereby avoiding any errors associated with multiplying those numbers. Dr. Mansfield added that it's very rare for the ancient world to teach us something new and believes that this system has huge potential for applications in surveying and education. Reporting in New York, Trinity Chavez, Art. Yeah, there, there, that shows you that's just odd, isn't it? What they're finding out about that uh and there's more news stories about it i don't know let's let's see what this guy says down here if i can cut into it a lot of these are found on these circular tablets that they have you know the rounded tablets versus the flats and that flat was more of like a instructional tablet yep this is it Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wildbooker from the University of New South Wales. And I'm Daniel Mansfield, also from the University of New South Wales. We've come now to talking about one of our favourite, favourite tablets from the ancient world, Clinton 322. And we have a fairly dramatic new interpretation of what this tablet actually is. Yeah, so in this video we wanted to reposition um, what we think the tablet really is all about. It's really quite a dramatic, I guess, divergence from the standard uh, story that's out there now. Mm. Many people have had a, had a go at trying to say what Clinton 322 is really about, and we're going to say that it's actually trigonometry, yes. but a different kind of trigonometry, and that's really the fundamental piece of the puzzle that, uh, that's been missing from previous interpretations. This is a ratio-based trigonometric trigonometry, so you will see that these numbers are actually quite significant. We're talking about base 60 numbers, and there's some of them, especially mm. in this first a column are quite significant. So yes, our, our, our main claim is that this actually needs to be rethought, or, and, and basically we have to rethink a lot of things as a consequence of this, because this repositions not just this tablet, but it also repositions our understanding of trigonometry, and also gives us a, a new vantage point mm. to think about trigonometric and geometrical things. Yeah. It's a vantage point that we would never have come up with ourselves. It's, it's completely different culture. It's very difficult for us to just drop thousands of years of mathematical understanding and say, let's look at it from a different, fresh way. Um, and fortunately, we have this insight from an ancient culture, and we can, we can learn of this new way of thinking about triangles from them. Yeah. Pattern, you have a pattern of increasing angles to about 45, 
two by sixty-two. It's actually pretty well the exact range that we find in Plato. Mm -hmm. um, but the Babylonians weren't concerned with angles or these ratios, sine and cos. And in fact, it's really difficult to actually use any of our understanding about triangles in the setup and apply it to the Babylonian sense because they just didn't think that way. You can't orient a triangle according to an angle and then talk about an adjacent or opposite side. It doesn't. It doesn't work in this framework. Instead, they talked about rectangles with a short side and a long side in the diagonal of that object. There are also important ratios in this setup, but they're not the ratios that you see here. And that's really why this couplet has remained mysterious for over 70 years, because mathematicians come along and say, oh, it's clearly trigonometry. And yet they haven't bothered to clearly frame what kind of trigonometry it is. Of course, it's not about sine and cosine, and that's exactly what the historians have been saying all these years. You can't, you can't just say it's a sine and cosine, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So what we see in Plimpton is a different range of triangles with a di different setup. Instead of having a hypotenuse of length one, the rectangles have a long side of one. They normalize differently. The important ratios are then the ratio of well, uh, this side to this side, the short side to the long side, and the ratio of the diagonal to the long side. And of course, the ratio of short, uh, short side to long side is a very important quantity in both Egyptian and Babylonian culture. The Babylonians would call it the Ukulu. And on Plimpton, we see the Ukulu ranging from 5930 all the way down to 3720. And these are, in fact, uh, the exact values that correspond to the triangles yes. in Plimpton. So this is actually the Ukulu that is found in row one. And this is the Ukulu that's found in row 15. And this one here is almost a. Uh, 45, what we call a 45, 45 line triangle. It's that one there, represented by that diagonal there. And then as the um, the Sekulu decreases, it means that that length is decreasing. And you know, there's actually 15 different steps. We've only shown five of them, but there's actually 15 different um, steps. Uh, if you like, the squared ratio of the diagonal side divided by the long side. Or, if you subtract 1, this column serves a dual purpose and gives you the ratio, squared ratio rather, of the short side divided by the long side. So really these are squared ratios. More importantly, they're exact squared ratios. There are no approximations in these numbers. These are all exact. And one of the things that uh, Neugebauer noticed in 1945 when this tablet was first published was that this is not just any random sequence of exact square numbers <coughs> they actually describe something rather special. That's right. So we'll see that there's a geometrical interpretation to these numbers as the heading naturally suggests. I mean, we're talking about diagonals and widths both here and in here, so it certainly suggests a, a triangle or perhaps a rectangle. And if we look at it from that point of view, then it, we will see that it's natural that this sort of is talking about a progression of, of inclinations uh, that correspond to what we might say to a progression of angles. Decimal number in our sense, that would be an integer, that would also be an integer. And then if you square this number and you square this number, you see that uh, this number squared plus some other number squared equals this number squared. So we had a Pythagorean triple at least a thousand years before Pythagoras was around. This is a very unusual thing to observe on a tablet. Pythagorean triples are quite rare beasts. So the fact that these are Pythagorean triples should really stand out on this tablet, and, and in fact it does really stand out. You know, and that really reminded me of these sun rays that you see in the Egyptian tombs that are attached to the god Aten, as in Akhenaten. And uh, you can see this just everywhere, these radiating lines that are really cut on a ratio. I can't seem to find the one that I was looking at before that is exactly the same pretty much as that guy shows and it looks like it would contain the 52 degrees of the pyramid and it may be where they find it at. They said they found there's a there's a thing that says they found the direction of the pyramid like this. They found the direction of the pyramid it would say in the cuneiforms there because of the way that the sun cut through the clouds right there where they were looking at. And it was something special that they did. And it gave you these radi radiating 
ratios, radiating ratios. Try to say that three times fast. Like this. You'll have a hole and you'll see how it starts radiating outward just slightly. And that that's what that trigonometry math is all figuring out. Now, the Egyptians got their math. There's the radiating lines. The Egyptians got their math from the Babylonians. And now we see the Babylonians, some 4000 BC or so, must have had this going on already to have the tablet at that level that they find. And of course, they find it in a layer that's 1800, but who's to say that tablet wasn't made 300 years before and they held on to it? They've lasted 3000 years now. After that point, who's to say that they weren't? A thousand years old at that point and that that isn't just a copy of something from thousands of years before that we all lost because Akkadians and oh I don't know Yahweh and his band of people went around killing everybody and their kids and everything they could and we lost all this knowledge mm -hmm.